I have a vendetta against Elden Ring. Is that because it's a bad game? No, I don't think so. Yeah, see, the reason I'm bitter is because Elden Ring won Game of the Year in 2022 over God of War Ragnarok. Everyone knew that these two were gonna fight for the top spot that year. And of course, I was rooting for my boy God of War Ragnarok to take it home. But alas, fate has not been kind, and I have been bitter ever since. So I had to find answers. What drew so many people to this game over God of War's combat? It's narrative. It's acting. I had to find out. I am a man of science, after all. I would never hate on something for no reason. This will be my journey to figure out whether or not I even like Elden Ring and whether it even deserved Game of the Year 2022. Our journey starts at the beginning, of course. The fallen leaves tell a story. The great Elden Ring was shattered. Is nowhere to be found. It was a very eternal witchy. And in the night of the Black Knights, Godwin the Golden was first to perish. Soon, America's offspring, demigods all, claimed the shards of the Elden Ring. Right. And that taint of their newfound strength triggered the shattering. A war from which no lord arose. It is. A war leading to abandonment. It's never going to return. Well. Oh, rise now. Be touched. Be dead. We have it. Call the one of us. Speak to us all. And one done, one grace began to rest. Yeah. Touched on the ground. Cross the fall, to land stone. Okay. To stand before the Elden Ring. And come, the Elden Lord. Oh my god, finally! Lore dumping like this at the beginning wasn't a very good start for me. As someone experiencing the world for the first time, what did I even learn from this cutscene? Someone broke some jewelry, this chick disappeared, this guy fucking dies, the missing chick's kids took off with the jewelry, some guy or plague led to the jewelry being shattered, there was a war and it ended with God abandoning us, and a bunch of seemingly dead people are calling us on speed dial to become the Elden Lord. How much of that did I even get right? God, I probably sound like such an asshole. These games really focus on entirely different things, so is it even even really fair to compare it to God of War Ragnarok? Probably not, but I'm gonna anyway. I'm not gonna pretend that God of War Ragnarok is a faster start either, but it is technically faster by like 10 seconds, and I feel like it does a lot more in that time than Elden Ring does. Also as a side note, didn't we criticize cutscenes being shitty like this in Black Ops 4? Just a thought, but now we could finally move on to the gameplay. Now, this is a Souls game, so I'm not gonna pretend like it's supposed to be easy. <laughs> Except the last Souls game I touched was Bloodborne, and that didn't end particularly well. There was like this blue bird boss thing, and my friend over the party chat kept telling me to shoot it with a shotgun to stun it, and it never worked, and then I never touched the game again. Though that was probably being more due to the game being locked at 30 frames instead of me being frustrated. Bloodborne fans, I now feel your pain, but it's way too early to judge the combat for where I'm at right now. So we'll save that till the end of the journey. But now it's finally time we start talking about the journey itself. Here's how that went. Liar ahead. <laughs> Liar ahead. Bunch of liars around here. Revenge ahead. Strong forehead. No victory. Eh? No eld- I feel like people are warning me about something. How did you die, sir? I 
guess I'll, I won't know. Strong pull ahead. Strong pull ahead. <laughs> An astute observation. Uh, whoops, you already saw that, my bad. I should probably talk about how I created my character. I initially went with Bandit until I found the class descriptions in the next page, and then I went with Confessor. A bunch of half ass customization later, I present to you this character. Her name is Amos. She's a person from a different dimension who gets sucked into other dimensions and tries to escape in an attempt to come back home. Can you tell I'm one of those people that builds an imaginary universe in their head? And I just went with Crimson Amber Medallion because I don't really know what anything else does. Anyway, back to where we were. We wake up in this deep dark cave and then almost get eaten by a horse. And then this chick shows up saying that I'll seek the Elden Ring even though it might be illegal where she comes from. We get our flasks and then we jump down to the tutorial area. Jump down the hole ahead and you will find the Cave of Knowledge. Okay. We went through the tutorial area, quite flawlessly by the way, in which I never learned how to parry or use incantations, but we moved on. We touched grass, and then we got told that we get no bitches by this guy. Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. Bitch! You didn't have to hit me that hard, bro. We then picked some fruit, killed a few birds, and then got our ass kicked by this guy on a horse. I'm thinking we go for it. What's the worst that can No, why the game freeze? Oh! Apparently, that's the worst that can happen. <laughs> then we met Santa? After we found out we were on the naughty list, we strolled over to the forest and conversed with the locals. Nearby was a place that I was seeking for oh so long. Civilization. Although, when I went to go greet myself, they were less than hospitable. Especially when it came to the mayor and this horny dude. Every single time I went there, I got my ass kicked by the mayor. They must hate Amos because she's from a different dimension. They're dimensionalist. So I did what any upstanding citizen would do. Ran in, stole their shit, and killed anyone who got in my way. Afterwards, we are met by this girl again, in which she also says we get no bitches. But you, I am afraid, are maidenless. Hey, I got that from the last guy. I don't need it from you. But that was when she offered something I never expected. I offer you an accord. Friendship! Oh, and she'll upgrade our stats, I guess. After seeing our share of uninclusive townspeople, we ran into more unsavory people. God, why does everyone hate me? But this time, there is a different guy on a horse. So I knocked him off his whip and I took it for myself. Cause you know, I'm baller like that. There's also this guy calling me from the bushes, but I couldn't see him, so I just ignored him. After making my way through a couple dudes with brazenly exquisite taste, I ran into a gigantic horde of townsfolk. Certainly it didn't have anything to do with their neighbors disappearing. So I made a tactical retreat. I grabbed a sunflower, then I jumped down a cliff, and then murdered this turtle. I then crawled my way through a swamp, avoiding crabs and bugs and the like, until I reached... Oh my god, we're so fucking back. But I was not safe yet. I had to continue. I eventually stumbled to these ruins where a bunch of homeless people and their rabid dogs tried to kill me. And after making my way through the rat infested sewers, I came across a peculiar chest. There was some kind of like eerie feeling telling me not to open it. But I was young and stupid and the greed got the better of me. I opened the chest and I got sent to the fucking gulag and it is here that i meet my second strongest adversary this hard guy my attacks would bounce right off his skin but eventually i got the job done it was here when i was thinking maybe this place isn't so bad after what is all that? <laughs> oh well at least i'll just respond where i last touched grass and oh oh no Eh, 
Anyway, that's gonna be it for part one, guys. Honestly, after editing this, I'm kind of raring to go back in again. So in the meantime, be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Ask me anything you want down there, and in the next video, I'll feature five of you. The next part probably won't be for a while. I have one other thing I need to work on first before I can work on it. But until then, I'll see you next time.